had a question on my Instagram. How do I lose belly fat after the age of 60? And it is a very good question because women tend to really struggle with their belly fat around the time of menopause, as they're getting older. Um, what we need to take into consideration as well is estrogen. So don't stress too much if you have fat on your body because every woman needs to have fat on their body because we need to have that estrogen. So if you're older and you have that little bit of extra fat on your body, not to the extreme of intense obesity or anything like that, but just a little bit of fat, estrogen likes to store in your fat cells. So if you have that extra little bit of fat, that estrogen is there. So that's gonna protect you from osteoporosis. But if you have extreme fat, then we have an obesity issue and we do need to think about what kind of foods we're putting into our mouth, how much are we eating on a daily basis, how much are we exercising. Those are the, ba those are the basics, but when it comes to hormone health, there is a lot of things to consider. So myself, I had radioactive iodine when I was 19 years old. And because of that reason, my thyroid then went low. So I had Graves' disease, which was hyper, um, and then I went low. Now with low thyroid, my metabolism is totally screwed. So if you've read my story, you know that I went from a size eight to a size 16 with lit within literally just 16, within six months. Like I put so much weight on in that space of time after radioactive iodine. And then after that, I really, really struggled with my weight. And my weight was always the thing that got me down because I'd always been such a slim person. Um, and then I just, I just couldn't lose weight no matter what I did. And I didn't understand about nutrition at that point because I, I, wasn't into, I hadn't learned anything about nutrition. This is why I'm obsessed with it today at the age of 43. So thyroid is responsible for a metabolism. And as you get old, the thyroid does slow down. And if you aren't doing things to help support your thyroid, then it will definitely slow down. And there's a lot of things that you have to take into consideration with the thyroid. Like for example, are you taking iodine? This is always like everyone's worry because people are told don't take iodine, it's bad for you. This is what the doctors will tell you. And iodine, your thyroid depends on iodine. It can't function without it. So if you're not eating any iodine rich foods, then how do you expect to have a healthy thyroid? That's just one thing. So your thyroid is responsible for the metabolism. Then we also have insulin because insulin likes to store in your fat and it can show up on your belly. So insulin is an issue I have with as well. So I have to keep a hold of my diet. So I do eat a lot of plant-based foods. If you want to learn about plant-based foods, it's in my book, my recipe book, Health Empowerment, because you have to eat that fiber to stop your insulin from rising and also things like your um, fats, healthy fats as well, to stop the spike of insulin. Then we have progesterone. Progesterone deficiency is a huge issue today because there is estrogen dominance. So a lot of women have estrogen dominance. I am one of those women myself because I had low thyroid and then that's also caused estrogen issues because I've also been on the contraceptive pill that's put synthetic estrogen into my body. So I have to make sure again with my diet that I'm not eating the foods that are feeding estrogen because if I eat the foods that feed estrogen, then my progesterone lowers. And because I've had radioactive iodine as well, joy to me, that also causes low progesterone. So I have to work on foods to keep my progesterone higher. And those foods are in my recipe book, Health Empowerment. And I'm also posting things like that on social media if you have been following me on Instagram. Um, so we have to look at the progesterone because progesterone that is low, that can also show up as belly fat on your stomach because it could be a relationship with that cortisol because cortisol likes to show, show up on your belly fat as well because when you're stressed out, progesterone then lowers and cortisol rises and then you have low thyroid because low thyroid and cortisol have a relationship together as well and also estrogen so there's a lot of things going on for your hormones here when it comes to getting older and the belly fat's just not moving and then we do also need to think about the movement. I am a yoga and Pilates instructor as well as a personal trainer. And so exercise for me is life. That doesn't mean to say that I am perfect because I have had radioactive iodine. Um, but you do need to exercise. And in exercise, I don't mean like pounding with CrossFit and running and all of these things because it's gonna raise your cortisol too high. And that's the stuff that I used to do. And I've had to learn not to do it anymore because it gives me adrenal burnout, which is not good for someone who has low thyroid. So this is why I teach more yoga, Pilates, meditation kind of exercise. Um, 
And when then of course you do want to weight train as well because testosterone is an issue when you're getting older. Testosterone levels will decline and women do need to have testosterone for healthy bones, for a healthy libido, and um, for various different reasons, which I posted on my Instagram page the other day. So to raise your testosterone, this does include things like weight training. So I also weight train. Um, so you do have to understand the relationship between exercise and food when it comes to your hormones and this is what i'm going to be teaching you in my online hormone course which will be out in another year's time but if you want to get a grip on it now i do suggest you reach out and read my book beauty in the gut which will teach you how to heal the gut microbiome because that is such an important part for our hormone health um, and also my recipe book, Health Empowerment, is 550 pages long, full of recipes designed to help you heal your thyroid, the progesterone levels. I'm teaching you what foods to eat for your progesterone. I'm teaching you how to lower your estrogen if you have estrogen dominance. And there are many women now struggling with PMS, PMDD, things like endometriosis, fibroids, um, fibrocystic breasts and all of this, which is an estrogen issue. And they're not realizing that it is an estrogen issue. So you have to get a hold on that now so that when you get into the menopausal years, your menopause symptoms are not insane. Because a lot of the reasons why you're getting the symptoms through premenopause is because your estrogen has been too high and you have that low progesterone. You've got to raise your progesterone. You've maybe watched the video that I made on vitamin A. Vitamin A naturally helps to raise your progesterone. This is why I posted the video for endometriosis and um, lowering your PMS symptoms. Now I'm not saying vitamin A is your be all and end all and it's gonna magically make everything disappear because it's not, because you do have to make sure that you, eat, you are eating the right foods to support the other hormones as well and getting that estrogen out of your system. You have to eat fiber. Fiber is so important to remove estrogen out of your bowel and keep your insulin happy. Belly fat is such a hard place for women to lose. Um, but as I say, there's various reasons why you have that belly fat. And it could be your cortisol, it could be your progesterone, it could be the thyroid, it could be estrogen issues as well if you're younger. Um, and you need to do more exercise. You need to make sure that you're not doing excess amounts of exercise. You've just got to learn what's right for your body, but make sure you are changing your diet and that is going to help with the progesterone levels and your thyroid levels and eating all the right foods. If you need support, that is in my recipe book, Health Empowerment. But do make sure you are exercising. You've got to move as well because things do slow down, guys, as we get older and we do need to work a little bit harder. And I've had this issue since I was 19. Um, so I've struggled with it my whole life with my low thyroid and metabolism. So it has been a journey for me. Um, and I'm mega strong, but that doesn't mean that I don't. I do have that little bit of belly fat, but because I have lost a lot of weight, I also have that belly fat with a little bit of sagging skin. And um, so, you know, we all have our own things going on. Um, and I'm just rubbing the castor oil in there, trying to boost the collagen, taking my collagen, repairing it all through that way. And don't be so hard on yourself if you're not perfect because as I say, when you're older, that little bit of excess fat actually helps keep the estrogen in you because we do have three different types of estrogen. We actually have more different types of estrogen, which I'm not gonna cover now, but there are different types of estrogen and some of our estrogen is still in our fat cells when we're older. So if we have that little bit of fat on us, it's gonna help protect us from things like osteoporosis. So if it's just a little bit of belly fat, who cares, you know, as long as it's not harming your health in serious ways. And um, that is a little bit for you there. And if you wanna do a class, Pilates, come join me and I will definitely get you working your belly. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Danny Jackson. You will find me at dannyjacksonhealthempowerment.com where you will also see my recipe books and my other books as well if you would like to purchase them. My online hormone course, the link is in the header on my website if you want to join there. My Amazon shop is also in the same bar on the top of my website. All my details are via my website if you want to know more about me. Have an awesome day guys and as always take care with your health.